Okay, so chapter three, section two, we're going to do linear functions. So um, if I were to open up, and if you guys have got your books there with you, if you were to open up and look at page, let's say 115. So take a look at page 115 real quick. And if I look at, um, if I look at number one at the top of page 115, can you tell me if it's a line or not? You can't tell me if it's a line or not? Is this coming through the speaker? Number one, it's a line, right? Okay, so if somebody asks you to look at something and tell if it's a line, that's pretty easy if it's on a graph. How about number two? Is that a line? No. Okay, how about number three? Ooh, not sure, right? So it gets a little bit different when it's in a table. Okay, so let's take a look. What are those, um, somebody read those coordinates for number three to me. Uh, Jack, read those coordinates for number three at the top of that page. Zero, three. Zero, three. Again, I'm taking the table that's out of the book, but I'm just going to convert them to coordinates. Go ahead. One, five. One, five. Okay. Two, seven. Two, seven. Good morning, Sam. Okay, and the next coordinate? Three, nine. Three, nine. Is that all of them? Yes. Okay. So, if I wanted to visually tell if this was a line, I could put all these points on a graph, and I could look at them just like number one at the top of that page. Hey, is it a line? But... Obviously, there's a little trick to do that. A line goes up or down consistently, right? Okay, so I want to look at the consistency of my x values, okay, or my domains, and I want to look at the consistency of my y values, which is my ranges. So let's start with the x's. From 0 to 1 is what? How do I get from 0 to 1? I add 1, right? So I just add 1. Let's see if it's consistent to the next one. From 1 to 2, what do I do? I add 1. From 2 to 3, what do I do? I add 1. So, so far, everything is consistent. All right, let's go to the other side. From 3 to 5, what do I do? I add 2. From 5 to 7, add 2. And from 7 to 9, add 2. Now, these numbers don't have to be the same. They just have to be the exact same for the domain and exact same for the range. So, what do you think? Is this linear? Yes. If everything is consistent, then this would be linear. Again, if you want to put it on a graph and figure it out, you're more than welcome to. Okay, I'm just showing you the, the little tricks to determine um, whether it is or not. Now, I'm guessing number four on that page probably is nonlinear. So let's look at number four at the top of page uh, 115. And somebody, uh, Andrew, give me, give me the coordinates for number four. 117. 16. Okay. Two and eight. Three and four. Four and two. Okay. So right away, I see 116. Okay. I wouldn't want to make a graph that big. All right. You'll see some in the book today. Some of them will be in the 40s. Some of them will be in the 30s. Some will be in the 60s. Obviously, we're not going to want to make a graph on those. Okay. But still, let's look for our consistency. One to two. Plus one. Two to three. Plus one. Three to four. Plus one, so we're still good, right? Okay, let's go to the other side. 16 to 8? Do what? Minus 8. We're just doing pluses and minuses. Okay, so minus 8. 8 to 4? Minus 4. Yep, minus 4. And 4 to 2? Minus 2. Okay, so again, we're just doing plus and minus. Because you could, somebody had said divide. Somebody could look at that and go, hey, 16 divided by 2 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2, yeah, that's consistent. But it's pluses and minuses only. No, no addition or multiplication. So are we consistent from the minus 8 to the minus 4 to the minus 2? No, all of those would have to be the same. So this one would be non-linear. Sorry, man, you're not a line. So, okay, nonlinear. All right. Okay, so now let's take a look at equations. Um, um
Okay, so let's take a look at those three equations. Y equals 2x plus 4. Y equals 2x squared plus 4. And Y equals 1 half X minus 8. Two of those are linear. One of them is not. What are your guesses brainstorming on which ones are linear and which one is not and why? Yes, sir. Okay, so you're going to go with the second one is, is linear or is not? Okay, so second one is not linear, and that's absolutely right. And the reason is exactly what he said, because it has an exponent. Any exponent makes a value non-linear. 2x to the third, 2x to the fourth, 2x to the sixth, 1 half x to the fifth. Okay, so any time you have an exponent... <coughs> I'm going to put that in parentheses. The reason is because of the exponent. It is nonlinear. You can have fractions. You can have decimals. You can have whole numbers. As long as there's a y or an x or both, you're good. Attach an exponent, not so good. Okay, so let's go through a few... Um, X equals 4. Linear or not linear? linear? Linear. Okay. Again, all it has to have is an X value, a Y value, or an X and a Y in the equation. Okay. What do you think? Okay. Those of you who say linear, how come? Oh, it's, it simplifies to what? 3 minus x. So the cube root of 27 can simplify. So now it has a y, it has an x, there's no exponents, there's nothing else. This is absolutely linear. How about y equals 4? Linear or nonlinear? Linear. Again, has a y, has an x, or has both, you're good. Okay. Now, how about x equals yz? plus 8. x equals yz plus 8. Not linear. The reason, who can tell me the reason? There's a third variable. Not necessarily just the z, but just a third variable. Anytime you have three variables involved, it is no longer linear. All right, that's about 845. 3-2 linear functions.